Hey guys, Janice here. As some of you may know, I was recently banned from Thunder's Place and that my thread that had a hit count nearing 800,000 was taken from public view. Since its inception, the Angen method has been a hotly debated topic on PE forums around the world. More than that, it's met its fair share of ridicule and opposition, especially from companies that depend on PE communities to turn a profit. But I'm not discouraged. I will still continue to regularly upload every Sunday, continue to discuss various aspects of my research, and yes, answer your burning questions. Up on the chopping block today is a paper from 2009 written by a Dr. Norm Shaley that discusses the use of vitamin D3 and K2 to chemically cause male sexual organ growth. And I've included a link to that in the description below if you'd like to read over it while you're watching this video, along with a few papers that give credence to this claim. So what exactly is vitamin D3? Well, besides being known as the sunshine vitamin, vitamin D3 is also a steroid. And it's labeled a steroid because it encourages cell growth and migration, specifically in smooth muscle cells, via the vitamin D receptor, VDR for short, and VEGF pathways, and does so in a highly targeted fashion. Beyond these findings, vitamin D3 supplementation has been shown to cause a market uptick in circulating prostacyclin levels, which is a known and quite powerful vasorelaxant. However, vitamin D3 supplementation is also known to influence our ability to retain calcium and has also been shown to increase our ability to absorb calcium from our diet. This leads into the second portion of the controversial paper concerning vitamin K2 usage. Vitamin K2 is an incredibly important vitamin in that it helps our body transport calcium to our bones and keeps it from mineralizing our soft tissues. Furthermore, there is a building body of evidence that suggests that vitamin D3 toxicity is directly linked to vitamin K deficiency. The same can be said for vitamin A deficiencies as well through an interplay between vitamin K2 and vitamin D3. This also leads into the third element of the paper where it states that the calcium intake of the study's participants was limited to further ensure that blood calcium and issues related to its excessive levels were further mitigated. So some of you have been wondering, have I tried it? And the answer is yes. But before I weigh in one way or another, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And I'd also like to explain the thoughts that led up to me giving this paper a chance. As some of you may be aware, I recently released a video that talked about the process of arteriogenesis in response to shear stress and some of the ways that a blood vessel remodels itself during that event. One of the key ways in which vitamin D3 might be able to improve the process occurs during the breakdown of the extracellular matrix and the increase in smooth muscle-based distension, which causes an uptick in proliferation. Much like anabolic steroids increases the rate at which muscles heal and grow, vitamin D3 appears to exert similar effects on smooth muscles. So keeping that in mind, a blood vessel that is undergoing the process of arteriogenesis should be able to benefit from its supplementation, number one, on an increase in proliferation, but it should also increase the rate at which it is remodeled since it has been shown to increase the rate at which smooth muscles migrate. So far as can be told from the paper, the men in the study did not engage in any related exercise, at least in an official capacity. Speaking unofficially, there is a chance that it did occur and could account for some of the variability in the results. If we look at bodybuilding and the synergism between steroids and weightlifting and then compare it to vascular building, by using vitamin D3 in a manner similar to steroids, including cycling dynamics, we may be able to create a system of physiological exploitation that results in a controlled and highly effective means of causing male sexual organ growth. It should go without saying that the implications of such a system are more than just a little groundbreaking. As of right now, this is my main area of research and experimentation. Well guys, that's it for this video. Let me know your feedback in the comments section below. If you're new to my channel and you'd like to check out more of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and then check out these two playlists. Also, if you're an international and you notice that one of my videos isn't translated for your language, let me know in the comment section of that video and I'll get to it this week. Lastly guys, just to give another word on the topic, I will continue to post and share my research. I have no intention of going anywhere. 
Your feedback and support more than makes it worthwhile. My goal is to kickstart a renaissance of thought, and I can't exactly do that with my hands in the pockets or stepping out of the public eye. So, I'll see everyone next Sunday, and as always, I'm your host, Janice, signing off.